Now we're going to work through a um, example for FESIC, right? We have this nice three by, by four case uh, of how we would find the general solution. And this is not the only way to find the general solution, but it fits in with the procedure we've uh, generated, especially the procedure we've used to find the null space. So this is a principal way of finding a general solution. Uh, if it exists, we'll see there's a better thing later on, and I want to sort of just foreshadow that, but we'll get to that. All right, so uh, I've written a lot of this out. So I'm going to mark it up a little bit, but mostly highlight it. Okay, so that's not good. There's a thing to fix right here. That's a good, that's a B subspace. All right, so solving AX equals B, uh, and we're starting to think of how we can do that with subspaces. We have null space and column space. So let's see how they work for our solution. Two other uh, subspaces to come, and they will more deeply help us understand the solution. So this is all from before. It's just copied. Uh, this is FESIC, right? So it's this three by four case. And we've had this set up where we've said, okay, let's take an arbitrary uh, B. And that was the, that was the, this is the first way we've um, laid out how to find column space, right? So you find the value, the B, find conditions on the B1, B2, B3, however many there are, down to BM, uh, that allow um, the system to be solvable. And so this was a good example. All zeros across here, after we've done the, right the full reduced row echelon form, here it is. We've got um, let me mark those. We've got uh, right, pivot column, free, pivot, free. So we've got zeros along the bottom, and this was the story where we found um, column space because this piece had to equal zero. So let's just back that up. All right. So imagine we've done that. We're working through it. And we've been, we started with a B, or, so, or you've done this for general B and someone hands you this B here, right? So it's 2, 2, 6, B1, B2, B3. Now it is actually true that this is the first column. So it's a contrived example, but we should, so we know 1, 0, 0, 0 is a solution, right? 1 of the first column, 0, 0, 0 gives us the answer. A times 1, 0, 0, 0 equals this B. That doesn't mean we'll find that solution, but in this case, we will. All right, so we're just going to stick in B1, B2, B3 into this form here because if we'd started with this B and done all the row reduction, that's, you know, this is all we need. Uh, so what happens? So B1, B, there's a 2B1 minus B2, right? So 4 minus, four minus 2 is 2 divided by, um, divided by this 2 here gives us 1. And then we have, we have these pieces let me get rid of these things. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so we have B2 minus B1, which is 2 minus 2, so that's a 0. And then we have B3 minus B2 minus 2B1. So 6 minus 2 minus 2 times this one. So 6 minus 2 minus 4, 0. All right, good. So this B is in column space. So both of these things, let me uh, just note that. So um, yeah, it's down here actually. So we see this tells us that B is in column space because of this zero, right? It is solvable, so that's good. We knew it back here. Okay, so both, both these things connect. Okay, now we proceed as if we're finding the null space, but for the null space, this would all be zero, right? That would be a zero there, but now that's not the case. So let's see what happens. So as it, as it is uh, written here, so we use the same steps as finding null space. So Nothing new. We just write out the equations as they are. Because we've gotten to reduce row echelon form, we see, as these are indicated, we just have the pivot variables appearing once, right? Each variable, each pivot variable appears in one equation and only once. So let me note that. It's a good thing to note. Right. Each Pivot variable appears only once. 
in all of the equations, right? Whatever we have, we could have 50 million equations. So x1 is here, x3 is here, right? These are the pivot ones. And then, and I've still got the same format, right? So this is pivot. Oh, that's having trouble. Okay. Pivot, free, pivot, free. So it should be clear when you look at this, just as it was for the null space, that we can always put the free variables on the right-hand side, and that's what's done in this next step, right? So free variables, put the free variables on the right-hand side, RHS. Uh, so we end up, and, and so these are kind of structured in that same way, so that we have a zero here, plus 0x2, right? You don't have to write that, but that's it. useful. So this is the difference of the null space is that we have this, we have a one here. Normally it would be all zeros, but we still proceed in the same way. So we write down, it's very important. We always do this, x equals x1, x2, x3, x4. And then we replace the pivot variables, right? With the, um, their expressions in terms of the free variables. So x2, uh, x2 and x4, not change, right? x2 and x4, not change, they're free. And here are these expressions that we wrote down just above for the pivot variables. Right, and we break this apart. So if you like, you can see that there is a, a zero plus zero times x4, and there's a zero here and a zero here, and then plus in this case, zero times x2 plus zero times x2. So we can write down, there's a, we can split this, this vector here into three pieces, a constant vector plus x2 times another constant vector plus x4 uh, times another constant vector. Let me uh, fix this character up. It should be an x4 there. It's a bit sad, isn't it? So let's do that properly. Okay, so constant vector, and we're gonna call this the particular solution. And as we noticed at the start, this works, right? So one of the first columns, zero of the other columns works. It does give us a, a times this vector equals the B in question, two, two, six. Let's zoom out, right? So A times this vector here equals 226. That's what we want. So we call that the particular solution. It does the job. Okay. We always find for free the null space. That always turns up. And so be careful with this language. Uh, we're going to use particular for the solution that um, solves the problem, x sub p. And then x sub h is homogeneous. This is calling out to other areas of mathematics, particularly, say, um, uh, uh, differential equations, but other things as well, where you've got some equation equals zero, right? And the operators are all in the, acting on this left-hand side. So that's okay, but this is sort of just to, the, the right, these words go to it, particular and homogeneous. And so the general story is this, is that A times, right, so this is X, this is our general solution here, Maybe let me move this a little bit. This is X. X can be broken into two pieces. X particular and A times X particular is the piece that equals B. A times X homogeneous is always zero. So this is something we just we just have to accommodate right now. We'll, we'll see more about it as we go along. But if we have a particular solution, we are required really to add all of these extra ones for which a times those equals zero. And this is why we have infinitely many solutions in this case, right? There is a solution. There is a particular x particular a times x particular equals b, and then there are all these there's infinitely many others that we can add. And it's really a two-dimensional subspace. Right? If we go back to this. This is a two-dimensional subspace here. There are two vectors pointing in different directions, right? Later, we're gonna see this, and I wanna get this right. So 
we'll break X into these two pieces. Again, this is X itself. This is a X, this will be X row, right? Like column, we have a row vector story for, um, for A, so we'll call it row space. So there's a kind of an excellent vector which can make our particular vector, right? The this is, let me put it here, this is not unique. But this one is. There is a unique row vector that goes to a column vector. It's one to one, so it's a big deal. We'll get to it. Again, same kind of story. A times XR will be the B and A times XN. So this is null space now will uh, be sent to zero. So it's the same thing. It's just that the row one is a really good particular solution. Not the same necessarily. Okay, big picture. Here it is. Maybe uh, let's do this. So big picture emerging. For, we're not there, we don't have everything yet, but we're getting the basic idea. So X lives in RM, A times X gives us something that is in RM, right? So in this case, a four dimensional vector, A times a four dimensional vector equals a, a ve gives us a vector that is three dimensional, right? Choose any four dimensional vector you want, sends it to a three dimensional vector. And we need to understand What's going on? The game so far is that we're given a vector that we want to reach. Okay. Okay. So let's look at this. Uh, so there's a space of there's this big space over here. It's R N, four dimensions, and it's broken into two pieces. And the first we only know one of them really so far. It's this null space thing. This is a bit of a funny structure, but the idea is say it's a this is plane, it's showing you some of that subspace. Um, and what's marked here is everything in here, every vector in here, here's an example one, gets sent to zero, right? A times what we're calling X homogeneous gets sent to zero. Right, there's a whole field of these things, uh, if you like. Okay, uh, then there's this particular one. It's up here, it's not quite in what we'll call row space, but it's a it's a, so it's slightly more complicated. It's actually got some null vector stuff inside it as well. It's not a pure row vector. But at this point, we just know that there is this one vector that x particular, a times that equals b, right? And then where's b? b lives over here in what's column space. Uh, and this is over in m dimensions, which is three dimensions for this example. There's an unknown world over here. These are things we cannot make, right, with this uh, matrix. There's a whole, for physics. there's a one-dimensional subspace of three dimensions we cannot make. It's going to be called left null space. We will get to it. But really at the moment, this gives you a pretty good sense of the architecture of AX equals B. B will, B has to live in uh, the column space of A if there's a solution. If there's a null space that's not zero, then there will be infinitely many solutions. So column, whether B is in column space or not, conditions, uh, whether there is a solution, and then a null space's existence can, conditions whether there's infinitely many solutions. So I've written out the, the pieces that are here. So, all right, so uh, null space vector goes to zero. The particular solution gets sent to B. And then if we add these two together, then A times X particular plus X homogeneous equals B. So that's the, the thing. We, we have a, a vector that does the job, but then we have to add all these other characters to it. All right, so mechanically, hopefully you can kind of get through this and we'll start to you know, fill in these other subspaces and we'll get a deeper and deeper picture. Um, all right, good, good.